Bacteria. What exactly is bacteria? And are they good or bad for us? We often associate bac bacteria with the idea of the villain, but are they really what we say they are? I mean, it's true that they have caused some troubles, like the Black Death or the Spanish Flu. Isn't it fascinating how something so small that we can't even see with our naked eye can be a threat to the existence of humanity? I mean, we even have antibacterial spray, hand sanitizer sold everywhere. Well, what if you're wrong? What if they are not the villain after all? What if the thing that killed a lot of us can potentially help a lot of us as well? Well, let me convince you. Good afternoon. Today, I will be revealing the hidden truth of bacteria. It all started in the summer of 2019 when my supervisor, Mr. Hayden, gave me the idea to look into microbial fuel cell. While being a 10th grader, I had no idea what it was. My curiosity got the better of me, and so I researched more into this, and I became deeply fascinated by this. I was fascinated by how bacteria is able to generate electricity. Like, wow, biology is cool. That kind of reminds me of what my biology teacher used to say. During the summer of 2020, I was chosen to be one of the 30 projects funded by the IB Innovators program. This motivated me to continue working on my project, and which led me to, joining, to join Biotrex and BioBuilders, a program that helped me further de develop my idea. I was privileged enough to have online meetings with a professor from the University of, Mi of Miami who helped me write my first scientific article. Over the last century, our Earth has been changing. Some places have become warmer, while other places have become cooler. Taiwan, a small country that I came from, experienced one of its coldest winters in 15 years. And Australia, on the other hand, experienced, one of its, experienced the hottest summer with a warm weather of 2.14 degrees Celsius above average. According to the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, it stated that the global temperature of Earth has been rising at a rate of 0.08 degrees Celsius per decade ever since 1880. And since 1981, this rate has doubled. Because considering how small 0.08 is, many people might overlook it. I mean, what can we do with 0.08? Practically nothing. But sometimes it's a small change that can create the biggest difference, just like how one bacteria might not kill a person, but as this bacteria grows and multiplies, it might eventually kill a person. Climate change is not just about the warming of the earth. It's also to contribute to more frequent droughts, rising sea levels, heat waves. And as climate change worsens, these events would only become crazier. I'm sure that a lot of people might say that, oh, global warming is just a hoax. In fact, statistics may show that our Earth is just going through a series of patterns. And it is indeed true that the global temperature of Earth has been increasing and decreasing over the last century. However, the temperature we are experiencing today is the highest ever recorded. The Earth's fossil fuel supply is slowly running out, and we need to find a new alternative energy, a new alternative energy that can compensate for this loss of non-renewable energy. At the current usage rate of fossil fuels, it is said that by the year 2060, all of our fossil fuels would have been depleted. And in 2017 alone, 64.5% of of all of our electricity produced worldwide came from the burning of fossil fuels. Imagine a world where 60% of our electricity is reduced. A lot of places won't be, won't be functioning at all, and a lot of people would be put out of work. Our lives would, well, it will become miserable without electricity. As of right now, microbial fuel cell may not be able to generate and compensate for the loss of energy from this non-renewable energy, but it sure has a promising future, but, and it can eventually put, or potentially help save humanity. It's a long stretch, I agree, but within a few years, we never know what can happen, just like how 10 or 20 years ago, people would have never imagined how highly, technology, how highly advanced technology would be today. 
or 20 years ago, it would have been hard or nearly impossible to convince them that phones and computers would be what it is today. Although there are many other alternative sources, let's look at why bacteria. Why exactly microbial fuel cell? Well, microbial fuel cells can be used in wastewater treatments. And when they're used in wastewater treatments, they can tackle two things at once. The first thing is producing electricity, and the second is to treat wastewater. And so when compared to other alternative sources, you may ask why. Why invest in microbial fuel cell when there are so many other existing alternative sources already? Well, this is my answer. Microbial fuel cell plays a bigger role. And although it has its limitations, we cannot simply ignore that other alternative sources also has its limitations. For example, solar panels. In places where nighttime is longer than daytime, solar panels will be less effective. And despite both of these two choices being expensive, the obvious choice is microbial fuel cell. Why? Because it has an added benefit, and this added benefit is to treat wastewater. Just like how if we're given a phone and a camera of the same price, we'd most likely choose a phone because not only can it take pictures, but it can do a lot of the other things as well. Finally, let's look at how exactly bacteria can gen generate electricity. Behind me is an illustration of a microbial fuel cell, which I will go into much more detail later on. Bacteria, just like humans, are able to respire. When we respire, we use a compound called ATP, which provides us with energy, which is how I'm able to walk or think or talk right now. Bacteria, on the other hand, they're also able to respire using ATP. However, when they respire, they, use, they produce this byproduct called electrons. And the function of a microbial fuel cell is to, well, it's basically to capture these electrons and turn them into electrical energy use. These bacteria that are able to produce electrons are called exoelectrogenic bacteria. They're able to transfer electrons and, or in other words, produce electrons, which makes them perfect use for a microbial fuel cell. So looking at this image here, you can see that there are two chambers, and both of these chambers are what mainly drives the production of electricity. The chamber on the left is where bacteria is present, and this is also where electrons are being produced and electrons are being captured. And both of these chambers have, has its special function. To determine whether or not this microbial fuel cell actually works, we can simply look at the light bulb. If the light bulb is on, then that means that electricity is passing through. In other words, it means that electrons is passing through, which where we can conclude that bacteria is producing these electrons. What's fascinating about this is that this added up electricity can be eventually used to power up a house. And if it's large enough, it can power up a household for many years to come. This can be the future of electricity, like, whoa, who would have thought that the future of electricity can be bacteria? We may not be able to eliminate them, but if we know them well enough, we can use them to our advantage. Although microbial fuel cell houses is still a work in progress, we may soon now see this new innovation break out. I mean, considering the population of bacteria, it's safe to say that we'd never run out of them. Microbial fuel cells used in wastewater treatments can often be quite expensive, but it's still worth it in the long run, and it's definitely an advantage to those who are in need. They struggle with electricity, and they struggle with, with clean water as well, so why not kill two birds with one stone? I mean, who wouldn't want to help out, right? Microbial fuel cells and bacteria still has a long way to go, and there's still so much more to discover. We might even potentially see microbial fuel cell powered houses or microbial fuel cell powered cars. I mean, who knows what the future of technology will hold for us? We'll be technically living in a world of bacteria. I mean, we already are, but you know what I mean. So that's it from me, and thank you.